Okay, so next chapter we're looking at is circles, which is from pure year one, and it's chapter six here. So I split this into two sections, algebraic properties, and then some geometric properties. So before we answer these questions, let's do the bits in the blue boxes. So it says the equation of a circle with center AB and radius R is, see if you remember this, but it would be X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared equals the radius squared that we've got here. So we can go straight in with these two questions that we've got here. We're going to begin by using this formula we've just written down to write down the equation of this circle with center 3 minus 2 and radius 2 root 5. So it's going to be for the 3 part, it'll be an x minus 3 squared. And then for the y part, because it's a negative 2, it'll end up as a y plus 2 squared. And that's equal to 2 root 5 squared. Now you can either do this in your calculator or you can do the 2 squared, which is 4, and the root 5 squared, which is 5. So it's a 4 times a 5, which is 20. So that is the equation of the circle for this one. Now, when we have an equation written like this, it doesn't look like the exact same form as this one that we've got here or this one that we have here. So to get it into that form, we're going to need to use completing the square. So I'll begin by completing the square on this first section, which is just going to be our x minus. Remember, you half that part. So you get x minus 3 over 2 squared. And then we subtract this part squared. So I'm going to be subtracting 3 over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. Now for the next part, I'm going to be looking at the y minus 5 squared. I'll complete the square on that. So that would be a y minus 5 over 2 squared. And again, you subtract this part squared for completing the square, which is minus 25 over 4. And that is all equal to 1 half. So all that's left to do is to put the constants onto the right hand side. So that's x minus 3 over 2 squared plus y minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to, I'm just doing this on my calculator, that's a half plus 9 quarters plus 25 quarters, and that is equal to 9. So the center of this circle as a coordinate is going to be 3 over 2 and 5 over 2. Neither of them are negative because there are already negatives here, just like there is in the formula. So that is a 3 over 2 and a 5 over 2. And then the radius is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so here's a bit more of an involved question. And I've put in the blue box that we can use the discriminant, as we did before, to reason the number of intersections between a circle and a line. So it's kind of following on from that previous chapter. I think it's in um, chapter three or four, um, where we're looking at simultaneous equations. So it says a circle C has equation x squared plus y squared plus 4kx minus 2ky plus 4 equals zero, where k is a constant. And we have that the line with equation y equals 2x plus 1 does not intersect C. Find in terms of k the coordinates of the center of C, the radius of C, and the range of possible values of k. So let's start off with actually using this equation that we've got here. It needs to look like that standard form, so I'll do some completing the square. Now when I write it down, I have my x squared. I'm probably going to group together the x terms first of all. So I have my x squared plus 4kx plus my y squared minus 2ky plus 4 equals 0. So let's actually zoom in and do some completing the squares. So I will half the 4k to get a 2k. And then I minus this part squared, so that's a minus 4k squared. For the y part, I'll half the minus 2k to just get a minus k. And I will subtract a k squared. And I still have the plus 4 equals 0. So now that I've got it written like this, I have x plus 2k squared plus y minus k squared. Putting the constants onto the other side, I have a 4k squared and a k squared, which is a 5k squared. And that plus 4 is going to go over and become a minus 4. So I want to find the coordinates of the center. So the coordinates of the center using this bracket here and here, the x part would be a minus 2k and the y part would be a k. And then for the radius, we can just look at the right hand side of this. It's just going to be the square root of 5k squared minus 4. It feels a bit strange, but it did ask for it to be in terms of k. So that's perfectly all right for us to leave the radius like this. Now, this is where we're going to be using the tip where we said that you can use the discriminant to reason the number of intersections between a circle and a line. 
because we need to find the range of possible values of k, and we need to use this fact, that the line with equation y equals 2x plus 1 does not intersect c. So if it's not going to intersect c, when we get the offspring quadratic, which I talked about in the equations video that I've done just a couple of chapters before this, that's when you take two equations, the circle and the line, you get another quadratic, probably another quadratic, might be a, an offspring equation, could be a linear. Um, we want this part, the discriminant, to be less than 0. So we're going to want our b squared minus 4ac to be less than 0. In fact, if I combine these two, it's definitely going to be a quadratic. It won't be a linear. I don't know why I just said that. So let's begin for part c by actually trying to combine together this equation and this equation to produce what I've previously called the offspring quadratic. So I have the first yellow part. I have x squared plus y squared. Well, y is 2x plus 1. So I'll write that as a 2x plus 1 squared. I've done the x squared and the y squared. I then have a 4kx and I have a minus 2k multiplied by y. Well, y is 2x plus 1 and I have plus 4 equals 0. Now you may be asking yourself, why is Mr. Bison using this equation rather than this equation. You can choose to use either of them. I personally just felt like this one was easier to use because the substitution for y probably seems a bit more straightforward, but you can use e uh, either. I tend to just use that one. So we've now got the offspring equation, the one that's a result of those two. The solutions to this are going to represent how many times they cross over or where they cross over, and we don't want them to intersect. So we will eventually be using the discriminant here. But let's tidy this up. Let's make it look like a normal quadratic. So I'll do my 2x plus 1 squared. Well, that will give me a 4x squared and then a 2x and a 2x, which is a 4x and a plus 1. You can always take that slower if you need to. I still have the 4kx. And then expanding these brackets, there's a minus 4kx, minus 4kx, a minus 2k and a plus 4 equals 0. Now, sometimes these can look really busy. So let's just deal with all of the x squareds to begin with. There is a 5x squared. x terms, I have a 4x squared, a 4kx, and a minus 4kx. Oh, that's actually really good because this one and this one are going to cancel out. So I'm actually only left with a 4x squared. And then in terms of the constants, I have a plus 1, a 2k, minus 2k, and a plus 4. I'll start with the positive. So that's a 5, and then a minus 2k equals 0. So I'm going to use now the fact, because there's no solutions, that b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Clearly, our value of a is 5, our value of b is 4, and our value of c is 5 minus 2k. So b squared, that is going to be 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 5, multiplied by c. It doesn't need that there, does it? Which is a 5 minus 2k, and I want that to be less than 0. So 16 minus 20 lots of 5 minus 2k is less than 0. So that is 16 minus 100, 20 times 5, plus 40. Obviously, it's a plus because of the two negatives, like this. So we get that 40k is less than, I'll add the 100 and take away the 16. 100 take away 16, that is 84. And I'll do 84 divided by 40. 84 divided by 40 on my calculator. And that is 21 over 10. So it says, find the range of possible values of k. Now, if we just wrote that our final answer was that k was less than 21 over 10, we would not get full marks in this question. I'm going to just zoom out here and see if you can think about where I would get that final little bit of marks from. It is from this part over here. We need to make sure that the radius is greater than zero, because if the radius is not greater than zero, we don't have a circle. So we need to make sure that this thing is also positive, because if you have a negative radius, how is that going to work? Or a zero radius, how is that even going to be a circle? So I have to do another part where I'm also going to say also the radius has to be greater than zero. A very sneaky part, but it's something that often um, has been asked about. So that's 5k squared minus 4 has got to be zero. Just double checking I've got that right. I will square both sides to get this. I'll put the 4 on this side and I'll divide by the 5 so that I get that k squared has got to be greater than 4 over 5. Now, of course, we've got a quadratic inequality here. We'd be thinking about k squared having to be bigger than 4 fifths. So we could talk about it being um, like this section. There's 4 fifths. So we could have all of that part or all of that part. But we know that k is going to have to be... Um, 
Oh, actually, I should probably think about that in just a second. So k squared has got to be greater than four fifths. So the critical values are going to be the square root of four fifths. So four fifths, let's square root four fifths. That is two root five over five. So it looks like k has either got to be greater than two root five over five, or k has got to be less than two root five over five. Because if k was less than 2 root 5 over 5, excuse me, negative 2 root 5 over 5, then of course we would still have a, this inequality being true, the radius would still be greater than 0. So we're now going to say what's got to be true for all of these things. It has got to be greater than 2 root 5 over 5 and less than 21 over 10. So the solution is going to be that it's got to be between 2 root 5 over 5 and 21 over 10. It's worth noting 2 root 5 over 5, if I just change that to a decimal on my calculator, it's 0 0.89 something. So 0 0.89 and 2.1, it's got to be in between those things. Or we could say that k has got to be less than minus 2 root 5 over 5 as well. So very, very sneaky question. You might not have noticed these two parts that we've got here. And the reason this one can just be by itself is because if it's less than minus 2 root 5 over 5, then k is also less than 21 over 10. So two different parts to that, a very, very sneaky bit. Um, and hopefully, I mean, this bit, I was making a bit of a mess of that, but it's a very simple inequality to solve. You probably could have done that better than I did. Okay, we'll have a look at some geometric properties, which is rare. They don't seem to ask this question, this style of question very much, but it's obviously a revision video. I want to make sure that everything is included. So geometric approaches can sometimes make solving a problem more efficient. And these are the things that you need to remember. First of all, that a tangent is perpendicular to the radius, pretty standard from GCSE. The angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Well, if this is a semicircle, we know that this must be the center of the circle or this must be a diameter. And a perpendicular bisector of a chord, here's a chord and its perpendicular bisector, and another chord and its perpendicular bisector will pass through the center. So if you do that twice, two perpendicular bisectors, they will intersect at the center of a circle. Quick exam tip, if you want to find the equation of a circle, we only need to find the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. Those are just the two things that we need to be able to find the equation of a circle. So let's zoom in on this question. We have got the points P, Q and R lying on a circle, as we can see here. The first thing it wants us to do is to show that angle P, Q, R is 90 degrees. Now, when it says P, Q, R, it means you're going from P to Q to R. So it means the angle at this point is going to be 90. Now, I'm just going to draw these lines on to help us visualize what's going on here. I knew that Desmos was going to do that, so I'll just do it freehand instead. Now, we're trying to show that the angle P, Q, R is 90. Now, there's lots of different ways that we can do this. I think the one that makes most sense for me is to look at the gradient of this line and the gradient of this line and to show that they are perpendicular. So I will begin by finding out the gradient of, uh, let's do PQ to begin with. So I'm going to write M with PQ. I'm just going to look at these two coordinates and find the gradient. So I'll do the change in Y. I'll do the minus 1, minus minus 2. Minus 1, minus minus 2 becomes a plus 2. And then on the bottom, I will do the 10 minus the 3 from the x parts that we've got here. So that becomes on the numerator a 1 over 7. Now, if I find the gradient out of the other line segment, which is going to be RQ, I will do the gradient of RQ. I will do minus 2 minus 5 for the numerator. And then for the denominator, I have the 3 minus 2. So I get minus 7 over 1, which is just minus 7. So if I work out the gradient of PQ and I multiply it by the gradient of RQ, I have a seventh multiplied by minus a seven, by minus seven, excuse me, which is minus one. Hence, we can say that PQ and RQ are perpendicular. So angle P, Q, R is equal to 90 degrees. Now, they'd probably give you the mark. If you said that this um, this gradient and this gradient are the negative reciprocals of each other, that would be a perfect way of explaining this too. But this is something I mentioned in the previous chapter, I think the straight line graphs, um, that if you multiply two gradients and you get minus one, it also shows that they're perpendicular. So we now know something because we're going to use one of these circle theorems that we've got here. This angle is 90 degrees. So we know that this must be 
the angle in the semicircle. That means that we know that this line between R and P must be a diameter, and so that must be the center of the circle. We're using this circle theorem here. So it says, hence, find an equation of the circle. Well, remember from my exam tip, all we need to do is find the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius. Now, let's do this for part B. We know that the center is, is the midpoint of the diameter. It's the midpoint of the diameter. And in this case, our diameter is RP. So the equation of the center, or sorry, excuse me, the, um, the coordinate of the center is just the midpoint of R and P. So we have the 10 and the 2. We'll find the average of the 10 and the 2. And for the R and the P, we have the minus 1 and the 5. We'll find that average. So the minus 1 and the 5. So the center is 12 over 2, which is 6. And uh, minus 1 plus 5 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. So we've now got the center. We now just need to find the radius. So the radius, I'm actually probably going to add these coordinates to the diagram. P is 10 minus 1. That's 10 minus 1. Q is 3 minus 2. R is 2, 5. And we've now just worked out that C was 6, 2. So the radius, I could actually find RP and half it, or I could find RC or CP. It doesn't really matter. I'll just find out the length RC. So we use our distance that we have. We look at the difference between the x's. So the difference between the 6 and the 2 is a 4, and we square it. We're doing some Pythagoras there. The difference between the 5 and a 2 is a 3, so we square it. So I do the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. That is 16 plus 9, which is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So the equation of the circle, perhaps I shouldn't have used the letter C for the center because I've called that that was the, cir the circle, but it doesn't matter. I've done it now. The equation is x minus 6 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals the radius all squared, which is 25. Okay, and then we have four parts C of the question. Let's zoom back in on the diagram. Given that S lies on C, such that the distance QS is greatest, find an equation of the tangent to C at S, giving your answer in the form of this part that we've got here, where they want it in that form. Now, I've called that the center. I might just change this center that I've got here. Let's just change it to a different letter. I don't know, let's call it PQR. We're going to use S in a second, so I'll call this center uh, T just because I don't like the fact that we've got um, I don't like the fact that I'm using C for the circle and then also C for this part so that's fine I've changed it to T now it says given that S lies on the circle such that QS is the greatest well that must just be on the other side of the circle as a diameter like this so this is where S must be we're going to try and figure out what these coordinates here and here are. We're going to just use some common sense for this. We've got from Q to T to S. So look, the X coordinate has gone from 3 to 6 in this part. And we know that this sort of this movement from Q to T must be the same movement as from T to S. So it's going from a 3 to a 6. That must be a 9 because it's going from 3 to 6. And this is going from a minus 2 to a 2 in the Y direction. So it's gone from minus 2 to 2. It's moved 4 up. So this must also move 4 up. So it's not going to be a 2, it's going to be a 6 here. I'm going to write that down in a different way to try and make sure this is crystal clear to you. We have Q, we have the center, and we have S. Q was 3 minus 2. The center, which was T, was 6, 2. And we can see this pattern. It's gone up 3, so it's going to go up another 3. It's gone up 4, so it's going to go up another 4, and we get 9, 6. So that is what S is. Now we're trying to find a tangent at this particular point and we know that the tangent will be perpendicular to the radius because of this circle theorem that we've got here. So I guess I just need to find out the gradient of this line. I could do it between T and Q or I could do it between Q and S. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll just take the negative reciprocal of that. So I'm going to find the gradient of Q and T. So I will find the gradient of QT to take its perpendicular in a second. So I'll do the change in Y. That's going to be a minus 2 minus 2. And the change in X is a 3 minus 6. So that's a minus 4 
over minus 3. Minus 4 over minus 3, that's just the same as 4 over 3. So the gradient of the perpendicular, that's just two lines with a little right angle to show it's perpendicular, would be minus 3 over 4. So last part is just to put all of this information together. The equation of the tangent at s, I'm going to be using the s coordinate and I'm going to be using the perpendicular gradient. It would be y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. They want it in the form where it's all on one side. I don't know if you remember that from here. ax plus by plus c equals zero. So I'll do that last quick bit of manipulation and we're done. Multiply by four. Expand the brackets on the right hand side. Put it all onto one side. We get three x plus four y minus 24 minus 27. That is minus 51 equals zero. So that's pretty much all the stuff I think you can need for circles, but the geometric aspect, they tend to ask some quite interesting geometric kind of questions each year, and they're not always that predictable. So just make sure that you know all of these things here and just more generally, you know, just shapes and how they behave on grids with circles. I will see you in another video soon. The next one is chapter seven, which is a mixture of the factor theorem and some stuff to do with proof.